<clears throat> Hello, my historical fashion friends. I'm coming to you from a room full of kittens. No, 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 MG. Call me. Call me. Um, because they all got their spay neuter done this week, and uh, I need to keep an eye on them to make sure that they are doing okay and not licking and biting it. Secondly, they all had some sort of stomach flu, uh, which was like two weeks long, and finally we figured out something that would help it. So uh, I have to observe their poops every time to make sure that they aren't having uh, some problems again. So, um, yeah, I got like super behind because they were all sick and our big cat was sick and I didn't have any time to do anything else except my regular job and auditions and taking care of sick cats. And then I went home for a, a fun wedding time where I got to wear a suit and be a groomsman, which I found to be highly superior to being a bridesmaid. Uh, so basically just everything is easier and uh, you just get to chill. Wow. But luckily because I went home, I got to film some fun outdoor cooking footage to go with this apron video and uh, I got to recruit two of my friends to be in it. So let's time travel six months back in time to the start of making this apron. We are starting off with this footage. Uh, if you can see my hair length, you might note that this is many months ago. I started this when I bought this fabric. It was from the like, basically the like little salvage extras uh, over at Joanne Fabrics. And I was like, this would make an amazing apron. Here I am trying to pull a thread uh, to cut this linen in a straight line, but this was a really soft linen and I think the fibers were really short. And so it was really hard to pull a thread. You're probably going to hear my cat meowing significantly in the back of this uh, because the cats are quarantined in a separate room uh, and he doesn't like that. So anyway, <laughs> I basically just tried to pull a thread. It wasn't really working out amazingly. So I was also using this ruler to try to cut in a straight line and it seemed to work fine. Uh, anyway, it didn't really matter that much because I was about to fold this fabric up and then put it in storage for like six months. Now I'm at my dad's house and I'm ironing the band for this apron. Basically, I folded one side over uh, about a little less than a half an inch and then I folded the other side over and then I just folded it in half. Uh, I was worried I wouldn't have enough thread because I went home and I didn't bring sewing stuff with me, but luckily my uncle got me this amazing case of threads. Uh, I didn't plan a big enough suitcase, so I'm going to have to uh, bring it back with me next time I go home. But then I just finished the uh, two long edges of the apron and the uh, shorter bottom edge with a rolled hem. And uh, here I am doing some rolled hem footage, which is one of my favorite stitches to do. Very satisfying. So I did a running stitch for the band of the apron and basically did a back stitch uh, every few sets of running stitches, just since it's not really holding a lot of weight. Uh, and then once I got to the part that was actually holding the apron up, I did a back stitch across that portion. And I actually had quite a bit of this linen left, so I can hopefully make some sort of uh, maybe a corset uh, or just line something. And here it is, ta-da! To go along with this, we're going to make ye old supper cabbage pottage and a barley slash oat bread since I couldn't find barley so had to use oats instead. The dry ingredients are 8 ounces oat flour or barley flour if you can find it, 1 pound of wheat flour, and 1 teaspoon of salt. For the wet ingredients, it's 2 cups of warm water, 1 third cup of brown ale, 1 packet of active yeast, and 2 teaspoons maple syrup or honey if you're not vegan. 
Ye old instructions. Mix wet ingredients and let sit for five minutes. Mix dry ingredients. Slowly add wet ingredients into dry and combine. Knead until elastic and let rise until doubled in size. Knead again and bake at 350 for 45 minutes or until the bottom sounds hollow. Or try your luck or the fire. And moving on to the cabbage pottage. We have one quart of vegetable broth, one cabbage diced, two leeks, two medium onions, a pinch of saffron and salt to taste, and uh, probably extra water as needed if you're like me. Throw everything in a pot and place it over a bed of coals or hang over a fire. Let boil until vegetables are tender, add saffron and salt and serve. Oh, and of course, step three, invite your friends over to do a very medieval campfire cookout with you. Uh, shout out to my friends who volunteered for this and my very not historically dressed dad. Oh yes, that helps. Do you want to try some soup and bread? cabbage soup. What's your rating? Surprisingly, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I think maybe the cabbage could cook a little longer. Maybe do smaller pieces next time. But I really like the leeks. The leeks cooked really good. And the flavor is really nice. I hope you're all enjoying this Blair Witch uh, style footage. <laughs> <laughs> the light is really dim out here. It's gonna be super noisy. And if we are murdered during this, at least we are murdered eating cabbage soup. My dream. We forgot to talk about the brown bread and the light is going. Our fire is out. Uh oh. We're gonna go to bed soon. Tell us about the bread. Brown bread is really good. I can kind of taste the beer, I think. And it's extra good with butter on it. For all, for all you, vegan trolls out there, it's vegan butter. And um, we can use our verisimilitude to uh, just think that it's uh, authentic Middle Ages butter, but it is made of expeller pressed canola oil. So it is delicious. And I thought it was actually gonna be bad. I've, tr I've tried to make bread like this before and it was bad, but it was awesome. And it was cooked in a real oven did not cook it on uh, this fire because my friends wisely advised me to put it in the oven. <laughs> I was just going to stick it on a rock. Just hope it cooked. No. <laughs> See you in my dungeon. Thank you all for watching and uh, be sure to let me know how you liked the um what? Uh, be sure to let me know how you liked this kind of like video ending and if you like recipe stuff. Uh, highly advise cutting your vegetables smaller and starting your fire many hours before you want to actually eat because coals take a long time. My cat is walking like where I have the tripod and um, it's like really wiggling it so enjoy the shaky cam footage. Uh, 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 do not bite your wound. Do not bite your wound, Baba. Don't bite it. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So, um, <laughs> where was I?
Yes. <laughs> I would definitely cut the vegetables smaller, especially the cabbage. Uh, I was like, cabbage doesn't take that long to cook. It'll be fine. Uh, also, I forgot that this is more of like an 18th century style cast iron pot, and I forgot that you can put the coals on top of the lid, which I think would have significantly reduced the cooking time. Um, didn't cook the bread ye olde style. Uh, we've been calling it a variety of things. It was supposed to be a barley bread, but uh, we couldn't find like any barley flour anywhere, and it was not planned ahead of time, so... Uh, I just ground up some oats and used an oat flour. Uh, I also used maple syrup instead of honey because vegan problems. And uh, also I am from New Hampshire. So it was kind of like an ode to New Hampshire and our maple syrup. Stop biting your wound. Stop it. Stop it. Yes, so uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you watched my tabard video, this will probably have a simile, sim similar introduction uh, because I uh, will be doing it on the same day. Thanks, and remember to subscribe, and I will do some fun medieval slash Viking person walking through the grocery store footage for y'all.